Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to The Limo Show. Presented by Town Livery. And here's your host, David Bastion. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Limo Show, coming to you live via the World Wide Web. My name is David Bastion, your host, bringing you The Limo Show each week on Blog Talk Radio. Now, I encourage anyone out there that's listening to the live stream to call the Limo Show hotline if, whenever you have a question for our co-host or our guest tonight. Now, the phone line will be open for the entire show. You can reach us at 714-868-0786. That's 714-868-0786. Now, tonight, we're going to have a special co-host. He's going to be uh, asking uh, questions of our guest and uh, sharing some information uh, that he learned last week uh, when he attended the day at the, a day on the hill. Uh, I'd like to introduce Arthur Messina from Credit Card. Arthur. Hey, Arthur, David. How are you this evening? Good. Do you recognize that song? It sure sounds like some hockey theme song, huh? <laughs> the Let's Go Islanders song. <laughs> Hey, good go. news about the uh, good news about the island is Nassau County finally committed to um, helping rebuild the Coliseum. So it looks like my island is going to be around until 2045. I think yeah. that's great. I think it's great. I, I, when I heard the news the other day, I, I, I thought it was great because I would hate to see that that team move. Now tonight, Arthur, um, and, and you're going to be helping me tonight. Tonight we're going to be discussing the benefits the benefits that a company receives by joining and participating in limousines associations on the national and local level. Now, our company, and I know your company gets involved, but our company, Town Livery Vehicles, we just renewed our National Limousine Association membership as a vendor, and uh, we do participate in our local association. I really enjoy being a part of the team and tackling issues that arrive on a local level um, and I feel that it's very important for vendors, for limousine operators, to join these associations and participate as much as you can uh, so that uh, your industry or the limousine industry forms United Front. What do you think about that, Arthur? David, first off, thank you very much for renewing your membership for the NLA. I think that's a great thing. And, you know, we're in the process right now, the NLA. I sit on the board of the NLA as a vendor director. Um, I'm one of a group that's on there, and it's very important that you renewed your membership. We have a membership drive going on right now trying to get some of the old members back to join on the MLA. There's a lot of benefits on a national level to be part of it. Discounts, you know, everybody's looking for saving monies, but discounts is a good thing. There's a, a lot of programs available with different providers. Creative Card itself offers a 20% discount for first-time um, people that spend spend money with Creative Card as long as you're an NLA member. There's telephone services. There's a lot of different vendor services that you can get discounts, which is just a simple thing to re, to regroup your membership money. Besides all the business that you can get from it, besides getting um, having the book and the NLA book, which is, is like gold, especially if you're doing affiliate work, you know, it's, it's very important to be part of the national association as well as your local associations. Now, strength in numbers is the theme tonight. And um, if you were on the fence and, and maybe unsure of whether you wanted to join your local, local association or renew your NLA membership, um, I encourage you to listen tonight. And our guest tonight is here to answer any questions you may have about membership in a local association or the national association. Arthur, would you like to introduce our guest? Sure. We have a special guest tonight um, right from my area, which is very good. I get to see him. Um, He is a principal owner of Executive Limousine of New York. He's also the current president of the Long Island Limousine Association. He's, um, like I said, a local fellow from the Long Island area. Besides, he's also a friend of mine. I'd like to introduce uh, Douglas Schwartz. Doug, welcome to the Limo Show. Dave, author, gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Uh, I really enjoy this uh, venue, and I'm happy to share some information with you guys this evening. 
Douglas, it's great to have you on the show. Now, Doug, I got to ask you a question because Arthur knows you much better than me. But how long have you worked in the limousine industry? Uh, I think we incorporated the business in 1996, so I've been at it for uh, quite some time now. Now, when did you first join the Long Island Limousine Association? Uh, pretty much as soon as they would have me. I think it was about uh, two years later as uh, the information was brought to me about the association. Uh, I went to my first couple of meetings and got involved. Doug, you're currently the president of the association right now. What should listeners out there um, who, who are not a member of a local or national or a national association, what can you tell them that of, of a reason why they join an association, local or national? Well, I, I think in both situations, local and national, I, I've listened to your comments and the things you said, but I think the most important thing that an operator can get from an association is knowledge. And, you know, even though we're friendly competitors and we still compete, uh, limousine companies in, in local areas complete, compete for market share, there is information that you can share with other operators on a friendly basis, you know, which is just invaluable. You can't even put a dollar amount on the things that you know we share amongst each other and the things that I have learned I know that my business has really skyrocketed uh, through knowledge that I got from the association and that knowledge can be obtained from the smallest operator with one or two cars who may have had you know some experience you know he could share you you know that experience with you which could save you a lot of headache and give you a lot of good insight I have a question for you Arthur um, you're a member of you've been a member of the NLA um, and many associations around the country now you know, outside of the marketing and network aspect, can you tell the listeners from your perspective why membership is important? Um, I think kind of what Douglas said is good knowledge is important, but I also think that right now, you know, as far as being an operator in the association, you can't get more out of it than learning who who are your potential affiliates. And what I also find, and something that I do, I travel a lot across the country. I've been to many of the associations from the New York end all the way to California and back. And I think what, what the best thing to do is an operator who travels outside of his working area to travel to other associations and take the opportunity to learn who those members are in that area and try to build up an affiliate, you know, affiliate base. You know, there's nothing better than if you're from New York and you go down to an association in Florida, besides getting the opportunity to get out of your office, it gives you the opportunity to meet people in that association, let them know about your company and your needs in the New York area, and at the same time, they learn a lot about you, and they can end up, you know, sending you business, and there's, it's, it's a great opportunity. The knowledge and the, the camaraderie and the affiliate base that you can get from traveling through different associations is just tremendous. Now, Doug, uh, with local and federal regulatory ages, agencies changing their policies yearly, and, and it seems lately, and, and everybody out there would agree, it seems like it's weekly, uh, in particular, the Department of Transportation on the federal and state level, uh, how does your association educate its, educate its membership on how to best deal with these changes uh, that are happening daily? We have a number of things uh, in place in our association. We always try to be cutting edge and, and always try and come up with new ideas from month to month. We brainstorm different thoughts to put different things together. Unfortunately, you know, our meetings are only every other month now. Uh, at certain times of the year, there's not a lot of information uh, to bring to the members, so they found that by reducing the uh, – frequency of the meetings, it, it worked a little better. But we did two things with our association through our website. And through the Internet, you know, you can really do amazing things. And one of them we've done is create a bulletin board where a member or a, 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 a board of director can go on there and he could place information up there and instantly with the click of a mouse that could be emailed to every every member. So I know in New York State we've been struggling with some DOT issues. Uh, there was some classes given. There is information on the New York State DOT website about the changes. We've been struggling back and forth. And as soon as the information comes, I can post that information on the website and members can see it through a, an email notification that they get. You know, the information is there for them to retrieve. But uh, we have telephone chains and, you know, we call each other a lot and just, you know, follow up and, and share the information. And, and when, I say, when I said before about the knowledge, you know, being invaluable, this is a perfect example. You know, if you're not part of the association, often you're left out in the dark and you don't really know until you have a situation. So, you know, the association at that level is just a key thing. 
I can tell you firsthand uh, with our local association uh, in uh, upstate New York, you know, we've we've been able to bring in new membership in the last year, uh, you know, because of the regulatory agencies. Uh, I don't want to say harassing, but but the regulatory agencies uh, changing their rules and laws and uh, disrupting business a little bit. Um, what's happened is the membership has increased because there are a lot of companies out there that maybe weren't aware of the rules and laws. And through joining the association, they've they've been educated and they've gained the knowledge to better run their business and and prevent being stopped. And, uh, and and possibly costing themselves business. Yeah, there's no question about but, it that you know, when there are issues, you do see the members come out. Everybody's looking. I know when the when uh, New York State enacted the sales tax, I'm sure you saw it. You know, in the upstate area, like we saw it downstate, uh, the members were just coming out of the woodworks just to learn the information because it was available to them at the association. And then it was really funny. There were other members, you know, who didn't belong to the association, were trying to get in on our information. You know, that we had so we were able to sign up some new members just for that but you know getting back to the you know the the, the core question uh, there's no doubt about it that the information is there you, you share it on a friendly basis uh, no matter what I do I, I did the uh, NLA day on the hill uh, together with Arthur and a couple couple of other operators uh, operators from across the country just just talking and sharing ideas and thoughts and you know don't be afraid to ask questions I always do I'm always interested in myself I try and be like a sponge so I can take that information and and bring it back and share it with my members now as far as the uh, National Limousine National Limousine Association um, one of the things that I want to pass along and this is one of the reasons why I renewed my membership you know the current board members Arthur included and uh, Diane Forge you know they've all done a, a tremendous job at tackling national issues uh, that, have, that do affect the limousine industry. Now, one of the things that I saw on the National Le National Limousine Association website last night was the National Limousine Association rebated forty thousand one hundred thirty-seven dollars in dues monies to NLA member state regional chauffeur transportation industries for the first quarter of 2011. Now, those rebates represent 20% of the dues collected from the NLA members who are also state, regional, and association members. And, that's, and basically, they've collected, more, collected and distributed more than $250,000 uh, that has been returned to local and state associations um, since 2006. Now, um, that's amazing. That is that is so true. At the most recent um, meeting that we just had in Washington, Diane Forge had the pleasure um, with most of the presidents from the associations being present. She was able to hand out those checks at the meeting, at the Day on the Hill meeting, which was great. So if the presidents were there, they received the check. If not, they will be mailed to the associations. And I just also want to point out for those uh, people that are listening, if you're not familiar with the NLA website, it is www. Dot limo dot org. That's www.limo.org. There is a wealth of information that, as a member, that you can gain from the website. Uh, members have access to different parts of it. Non-members, you can go on there. You can see some information. But if you are a member, you have access to more information within the website. There is a wealth of knowledge. And, you know, for a small fee to join the association, there is plenty of benefits. And with that in mind, Doug, um, what other benefits does the associations receive as being a member and partner of the MLA? Well, I know for sure that you mentioned the dues, and, you know, that was a terrific thing that uh, I was in the meeting at the Washington uh, event, and Diane called me up and presented the check to me, which we were kind of surprised, you know, that it was so much, you know, for such a short period of time. You know, so that's a terrific thing. Uh, I have been visited by past NLA presidents, uh, to uh, my office and to our association meeting to come and share information. And I know when uh, my association has questions and things that affect us on more of a national level or need assistance, in just assistance in running the association, you can always reach out to members of the NLA, and they're very, very helpful in the things that they share. But it's true what Arthur said. If you, if you log on to the NLA website, uh, limo.org, you can certainly find a lot of information, and most of the things that Arthur mentioned initially, uh, I know I participate in the Nextel program. We use the FedEx. You know, uh, just so many things that are available to you, and we try to make use of all of them. It's just a terrific association. They've certainly done a lot of things 
uh, helping associations on a state level in, uh, and a local level in different parts of the country, and, and they really do a terrific job. Now, you are listening to The Limo Show. It's presented by Town Livery here on Blog Talk Radio. Now, we will be heading to break. Uh, this is the time to get on board uh, to ask Arthur, Doug, or myself a question. When we come back, we will be discussing the NLA Day on the Hill that both Arthur and Doug attended. Now, you can reach us at 714-868-0786. That's 714-868-0786. If there's anyone out there that's listening that is a president of an association, if you're a board member on the NLA and you'd like to call and and tell us uh, what you think uh, and give us your feelings about joining associations and participating, we'd love for you to get on board and give us a call. When we come back, like I mentioned, the phone lines will be open to you. You are listening to The Limo Show here on Blog Talk Radio. Would you like a marketing partner that not only understands marketing, but knows the transportation industry inside and out? Are you struggling to attract new customers, retain your current customers, or win back lost customers? If you find yourself saying yes to any of these questions, there's only one place to call. Call the marketing wizard of the limousine industry, Arthur Messina from Create-A-Card. Create-A-Card is the number one supplier of business cards, marketing supplies, and promo items to the limousine industry of North America. Contact Create-A-Card today at 1-800-753-6867. That's 1-800-753-6867 so they can help transform your marketing and advertising into consistent sales-generating machines. You can also find us on the web at createacardinc.com. That's createacardinc.com. Crystal Coach didn't just become the number one coach builder in the world overnight. Crystal's commitment to quality, safety, and customer satisfaction have helped produce the finest custom coaches, SUV limos, buses, and specialty vehicles in the market today. Armed with a legendary reputation as an innovative leader, Crystal Coach continues to lead the transportation industry into the future. Contact Senior Sales Rep Marty Vitelli at 1-800-CRYSTAL, that's 1-800-K-R-Y-S-T-A-L today for current availability of new and used limos, shuttle buses, and custom vehicles for sale. Crystal Coach, continuing to lead you into the future. Are you looking to add an Executive L Town car to your fleet? If you are, call Town Livery. Town Livery is a franchise Ford, Lincoln, Chrysler, and BMW dealer that specializes in selling livery vehicles nationwide. Town Livery is located in Buffalo, New York, and is able to ship your vehicle to you at an affordable price. So, when you think of livery vehicles, think of Town Livery. Town Livery can be reached at 800 730 3683. That's 800-730-3683. One-stop shopping at Town Livery. You're listening to The Limo Show on Blog Talk Radio. Welcome back. You are listening to The Limo Show presented by Town Livery, heard weekly on Blog Talk Radio. Now, we have a special co-host tonight, Arthur Messina. Arthur, can you say hello to everybody out there from Creative Card? Hey, everybody. Arthur from Creative Card here. As well as Doug Schwartz. And Doug, can you say hello? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show. From Executive Limousine. Uh, and he's also the president of the Long Island Limousine Association. Now, we mentioned the NLA Day in the Hill. Both Arthur and Doug recently attended the NLA Day on the Hill, which I believe was May 4th, guys. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Okay, now before we we get into the issues that were discussed uh, with our elected officials, Arthur, can you tell us a little bit about the event and uh, how how you participated as a vendor member? The event is a national event where operators, owners, operators, and association presidents and board members come from all across the United States to Washington, D.C. It's kind of our day to speak about our issues, our problems, our concerns to our government officials. 
Um, we were fortunate enough to be um, educated uh, from Cornerstone, which is the National Limousine Association lobbyist, and they do a great job for the NLA. And they, they briefed us. They gave us the information. Um, each group was broken up to their regions. Um, myself, Doug, David Eckstein, who's uh, with Valera Global and also another board member, and Avi Mazus, who's with Henry Limousine, who's also from the New York region. The four of us got to travel together and represent the New York region. In that time frame, we, were, we had six different appointments set up, everything from you know um, different areas, people that represented us, people that represented other parts of New York, and it gave us you know basically about a 10, 15-minute window opportunity to visit their office and to get in there and speak our, our issues, tell them a little bit, and I know we'll get into it a little bit more, but we spoke about the Ride Act. We spoke about overtime wages. We also spoke about, you know, just things in our community. If we spoke with somebody from our local community um, that we had a relationship with or, or we knew something of them, we were able to talk with them and try to get a little more one-on-one -on -one time with them, let them understand that we're, we're, we're small business, we're medium-sized businesses, and we need their help as much as they need our help. They need our votes and we need their help in, in the government so it was an opportunity to speak with them and get our message message across as a vendor member I was there really just to support my you know my fellow industry you know I sit on the board as a vendor you know I'm in the marketing business the issues of the ride act and overtime wages don't personally affect me but you know what if they affect my clients then they affect me if my clients are being troubled by these problems and it ends up hurting them where their size of their business gets smaller or it, it ends up putting them out of business, therefore then it does affect me. So I went there as support. Um, a lot of the issues I couldn't speak direct on because it didn't affect me personally, but I was there in support of my fellow industry members. All right, sir. I agree 100%. Uh, with us being a vendor, you know, you couldn't have. I agree with you, and I, I couldn't have said it any better. Now, Doug, this year's Dan the Hill. The two main issues that that uh, the association tackled were the federal labor and wage rules and the Ride Act. Now, can you tell the listeners about you know how each of these issues affect the industry? The first one I'd like to talk about is the uh, federal labor laws. Absolutely, David. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to. Uh help you with those issues. Uh, the Department of Labor has a uh, recently enacted a new way to handle overtime wages. And if the limousine operator is listening, I'd like them to pay attention and try and understand exactly how I'm <laughs> going to explain this to you. They're saying now that gratuity, because for so many years it's been put on the bill and it's kind of a forced gratuity, they use the word imposed, that it's an imposed gratuity and it's really not elective. And if that's the case, then that is really just another line item, and it's not really a tip. The client is forced to give it. They don't really have much of a choice, and it's a tip. It's not a tip. So if it's a forced issue, a forced dollar amount, it deserves to be part of the overtime. So what does that mean? For example, you have a driver who works for you, a chauffeur. He works 50 hours a week. Let's say he makes $10 an hour. That's $500, 50 times 10. Then in that week, he earns an additional $500 of billed gratuity, gratuity that was on the bill. So now he earned 500 in payroll and 500 on gratuity. That's 1000 The Department of Labor is saying, that gentleman worked for you, that person worked for you 50 hours, he earned $1,000. You take the 1000 you divide it by 50, now you have $20, an average, uh, $20 per hour average. The first 40 hours that he works, you're going to pay him 20. The next 10 that he worked overtime, you're going to pay him time and a half, 30. So it's really an issue for a lot of companies, and it's been on the books for, uh, I think, a couple of years now. And now with the audits and as they're starting to work their way through the industry, a lot of operators are having problems with this because you can't charge the client time and a half on the gratuity because the guy crossed over the 40-hour mark. So it's just something that comes out of the company's uh, funds, and if you if you know anything about the limousine industry, most of the companies work on very small margins. Some of them work at less than five percent. So there's really not a lot of room 
to give this additional money to the driver, this uh, time and a half on this gratuity. So this, I think, is a real major issue, uh, and I think as the Department of Labor works on their audits, you know, working their way through the industry, uh, could be a lot of trouble for a lot of companies with this issue. So we went there uh, to explain to the, the, the senators and the Congress people that uh, this is a real issue for our industry, and we need to make them understand, the Department of Labor, that the gratuity, even though it's on the bill, this was done as a convenience thing. It's convenient for the corporate traveler. He doesn't have to reach in his pocket. It's convenient for the retail customer and the family traveler. They know it's taken care of, and it's on the bill. Uh, certainly, the client has a choice. I know in my business, they could say, listen, I don't want to give 20%. I want to give 15 I want to give the gratuity in cash, however I want to do it. So, you know, I view it as not imposed. The attorney from the NLA is supposed to head to the Department of Labor now and try and inform them that it's not really an imposed issue. But the audits that are going on right now by the Department of Labor have been proving that you're supposed to pay this time and a half in the way that I explained it. And, and this is one of those issues, again, on, on why it's important to participate in the association and uh, you know so everybody can group together and tackle these issues when they come up. Now, the second uh, t topic was the RIDE Act. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The RIDE Act, the RIDE is an acronym. Uh, I think that's the right word for it. It stands for Real Interstate Drivers' Equity Act, right? And this was a, a thing that was put into place, uh, I think this is over five years, and I'll explain to you briefly what this is. Uh, airports in different countries although we don't see it in the downstate New York market. I know they have it in Boston. I know they have it in some of the Florida airports. Limousine, not car service, not taxi, not bus, not regular patrons. Limousine companies are charged an additional pickup fee at the airport in addition to parking at the airport if parking is available, which is charged to their account by transponder, much like an easy pass where you would have in the vehicle. You pull into the airport, if you're a limousine company, you could pay $3, you could pay $5. I believe in Boston Logan, I believe that the, the transponder fee is $30 just to pick $30? somebody up at the airport. That's what I believe. It's $30 Cow. just to pick somebody up at the airport in Boston Logan. So the Ride Act was put into place to say that if the airport gave the limousine company some special consideration, a special area to meet and greet their clients, a special parking lot, or something above and beyond, then they could charge the fee. If they didn't give them anything extra, then it was unfair to charge the fee and they wouldn't charge the fee. However, there's really no one enforcing the Right Act. And airports across the country are charging these exorbitant fees. And when you're trying to sell limousine service, which is a premium above car service or taxi or livery service, it's a luxury service, and now you have to pay this additional fee and charge it to the customers, it, it makes it that much harder to sell the ride because it's that much more expensive. And in addition, the vehicles that pull into the airport that are read on the transponder, if you fail to meet your client, you pull up to the terminal and he's not out there and the police officer or traffic person makes you loop around again, you could get charged another fee and right on the oh, transponder. Wow. So it's definitely an issue. Uh, I'm hearing from operators in all different parts of the country. California is a big one where they have these exorbitant fees, and it makes it more difficult to sell the ride and very difficult to compete against other levels of service. So the NLA did a terrific job. Uh, it was very well organized the way that they handled it as we went from uh, the Senate to the House and, and visited with the politicians, uh, the, the, the admins, uh, whoever they had. They definitely had appointments set up for us. Uh, as Arthur mentioned, Cornerstone did a very nice job, and it was very educational, and I completely enjoyed it and uh, you know, got an education. It's my second year uh, doing it, and uh, it was great. It was a great event. Now, Arthur and Doug. A uh, question for you. I know it's early on, and it's only been about a week or so since you both attended. How successful do you think the efforts of the 65 uh, NLA members? Uh, how successful do you think the efforts uh, will be looking into the future? Well, Dave, I, I want to tell you, I think that we we definitely made our our issues heard. We had over 100 appointments 
and all over the area as far as, you know, between the Congress, the Senate, and everything. We had over 100 appointments scheduled, and we pretty much covered all of them between all the different regions. And, you know, our message was, was given across. Now it's a matter of, you know, the NLA already took a, a, a position already for the people that were there to follow up with their legislators and, you know, send an email to them, send a text to them, and get your message so that it's still fresh in their mind. It was very important to get the message across, and it's just as important to follow up on it. And unfortunately, as you know, in government, nothing happens overnight. So, I mean, do we have a, a result from it, you know, since we were just there last week? I'm going to tell you the answer is no. But, you know, there were some really good things that happened, and, you know, at this point, if everyone does their follow-up, which was important, and more people get involved on a regular basis, not just, you know, this is just not like going to church on, you know, Christmas or Easter. You can't just go twice, and you can't just go to, you know, Washington once a year and expect something to happen and expect to, you know, all your sins to be thrown away and, you know, people to listen to you. This is something that, you know, it's a regular, ongoing process that I think we will get results, and we have got gotten results over the years. It's just a matter of, you know, sticking sticking to it. The NLA, if I could add, uh, did a terrific job, had very nice presentation folders prepared for us with all the information, uh, kind of queued us up the day before, you know, exactly how we were going to handle it. And at least in our group, the New York contingent that went to visit the, the politicians, uh, the Cornerstone guy really – you know, it took like almost like a back seat. He was kind of like overviewing it, and I think uh, we did a terrific job as a group, you know, to inform them, you know, about these issues and the things that were hurting our industry. And they seemed supportive at that level. I know that David Eckstein uh, participated in a in a, uh, a cocktail event for uh, one of the senators that we visited, and uh, we ran into Frank Lautenberg in the hallway and was able to grab his ear and explain some more about. You know the issues, so I think it was a terrific event. Definitely positive. I know that Cornerstone uh, they had a function for uh, a senator the night before, and they placed a new bill for the uh, Labor Act for the uh, Department of Labor situation. So you know if they can get some votes for that and support. And I think you know uh, it's a matter of uh, one one politician calling the other one on the phone and saying, "Hey, I think this is a good idea. Take a look at this." And uh, I think it was positive. I think, like I said, I think it was a terrific event. Dave, I was going to say, like Doug had mentioned, um, Dave Eckstein did go to a fundraiser. It was uh, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, you know, and the more that local people can get out there, whether it's a fundraiser and get their name out there and keep mentioning the issues and keep mentioning the NLA, it's important. Laboa, which is the, uh, you know, another organization here in New York, they had Peter Valone come down and talk to the members as well. So it's it's always, you know, Sergio Sanchez, the president of Laboa, is very aggressive in getting different people down to his meeting and getting them to come and, and listen to the issues and try to help out and see what they can do to help out the membership. It's important. But like I said, you know, it's just not a one-time hit. It's everybody doing something, whether it's once a week, once a month. You know, it's getting out there and making something happen on a regular basis. Now, uh, Doug and Arthur, and I'm going to ask you both, who was the most interesting person that you did meet with? Like, which uh, representative really uh, was interesting to talk to? Well, I have to say that the Frank Lautenberg was really uh, incredible. I, I don't know if you know if there's any history there, if uh, the, the, the listeners have any knowledge. Uh, he's an old-timer. I would say that he's a guy well into his 80s, and he was a guy that they, they brought back and uh, put him back in the seat after he retired. Uh, he was very interested. Uh, he was really focused. He was really on point. I thought, you know, he really he really shared our concerns, you know, for what some of our issues are. Hopefully he'll take that information. He has the folder you know, and he'll be able to bring that uh, forward. But uh, all in all, uh, you know, everybody that we met with uh, was very, very receptive for our needs. It's it's one of those things. It's trying to put your face with the local politician. You know, in my area, it was, uh, you know, Tim Bishop. Um, you know, in Doug's area, it was Peter King. And, you know, sometimes if we didn't get a chance to meet them, we actually saw Peter King when we were on the steps of the Capitol. And, you know, there was a lot going on that day. And even though that they, they have an, you have an appointment with them, sometimes you don't meet the head honcho. You meet the second in charge. They sit and listen to your issues. And then what they do is they report everything back to the big chief. So, um, 
Um, I think the idea of, of going into the office and seeing Tim Bishop, who, who we get to vote here on a local level, and then you're in his office, you know, it, it's fascinating. It's, it's really, it's, it's politics and work. I mean, if, if nobody's had the opportunity to go there, I mean, you're, as a voter, you're allowed to go and knock on the door of your congresswoman, you know, your senate person, and go in there and visit their office. Um, whether you get a chance to meet them is a different story, but you have that ability. I mean, you voted them in there. You're the ones that put them in that spot. They have to listen to you whether they do something is a different story, but it was a great opportunity to do that. We we were also very fortunate as the New York group. Um, we took the liberty of actually sitting in the gallery because we had about a two-hour layover at one point between our appointment with uh, Chuck Schumer. And, you know, for the first time, I've never done this before, Avi Mazus um, introduced us to it, took David, myself, and Doug, and we went and we sat in the gallery, and we were listening to them as they were debating. Um, actually, that particular day, they were debating an abortion issue. And, you know, it's, it's, it's quite fascinating to see how everything is handled. You know, Madam, may I have two minutes to speak about my issue? She grants it. And then can I have another minute? And she grants it or, or not grant it. I mean, it was, it was pretty fascinating. I mean, I've, I've learned more. It was it was a social studies class brought to life, which was very fascinating. It sounds great. I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, next year, based on, on schedule, uh, it's sometimes a little bit harder for me to get away because I do have three uh, little children, but I think next year I'm going to try to make it and uh, participate. I, I think that, uh, you know, it's an event that's worthwhile, and uh, I believe that everyone that participated uh, did make an impact, and I think in time, uh, you know, some of the things uh, that you guys worked on, uh, you know, will happen. Now, Arthur and Doug, is there anything else you'd like to uh, leave us with before you head off? I thank you for putting the Limit Show together. I enjoy listening to your blogs. It's a, it's a very informative. It's bringing a lot of information uh, out to the public there. And the public should really, if you don't belong to your local association, I'd give them a call on the phone. I don't think there's an association out there that wouldn't let you come in and sit in a general meeting as a guest, you know, to kind of get a feel. Uh, most associations, you know, that I've been to have been very receptive and very friendly. Uh, we have in ours, the Long Island Limousine Association, we have a membership host, you know, kind of makes you feel comfortable, share information. And they're regular guys just like you and me you know, trying to make a living and trying to figure things out and make your business operate smoother. Dave, I'm going to try to also let everybody know there's two ways to find about association meetings. One is at limo.org. Uh, the NLA does post local association meetings on the home page of the website. Also, if you go to the Limo Digest magazine, they have an association calendar as well. So just so that you know, like for this month, you know, in May, you know, the 17th, Arizona, Colorado, Maryland, and West Florida is having their meeting. On the 18th, you can go, and if you're in New Jersey or on the East Coast, there's the Limousine Association in New Jersey. So there's many opportunities for people to travel and to attend association meetings. The information is out there. Knowledge is available. Um, learning and finding other operators to work with across the country is available. This information is not hidden. If you go to limo.org, you can find information. If you check the trade publications, whether it's you know Limousine Show for Transportation or the Limo, Digest Magazine, the information is out there. You'll find value, as Doug said, in attending the meetings. I know myself, I'm looking at my calendar right now, in the um, next couple of months, um, this month I'm going to the Limousine Association in New Jersey. They have a big um, auction meeting May 18th in West Orange, New Jersey. Coming up after that, there's a New England Livery Association June 14th. Um, uh, on the West Coast, I'll actually be speaking at the Arizona Limousine Association June 16th. And then you even reminded me that um, the um, July 20th. How do we say? Yeah. The Latoni is on um, the L B T O U N Y um, is July 20th up in Buffalo. So there's plenty of meetings to be had out there. I know, for example, um, a couple of my clients um, are traveling from outside of the area to come up to the New Jersey Association. Great opportunity. I have a client from Florida coming up, another one from Nashville, another one from Maryland, and these guys are taking advantage of traveling outside of their area, 
go into association meetings that have good population in them and good opportunity where they are sending out business to other parts of the country. These guys are coming up, making contacts, making friends, shaking hands, telling them their needs of what they need, and you know, trying to make some more connections to get some business their way. Associations are powerful if you take advantage of them. If you sit home and complain and sit in your, drink your coffee, cry in your tea, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you put the effort in, to it, it's amazing what you can get back out of it. I agree. I agree. And uh, Doug, uh, July 20th, like Arthur mentioned, will be our association meeting. You're more than welcome to attend. I know your daughter goes to school in the Buffalo area. Uh, we'd love for you to be a, a guest at the meeting, which will be hosted at our dealership uh, on July 20th. Actually, David, I believe that I can make that happen. I look forward to it. Uh, I'm going to return this author. Yeah, road trip. I'm going to return this author to the New Jersey Association. I've been to Philadelphia. I'm going to go up to New, New England. It's a terrific way. And and I'll tell you, as a operator, as an operator, the more you put your face out there in front of the other people, you know, it may not turn into a big, huge affiliate account. You know, bringing you jobs every day. But you know, when they have a need in your area, you know, they think of you. They say, Hey, I'm going to call that guy. You know, he was a nice guy get them on the phone, and just provide service for them. So it's just a great way to pick up some extra rides. Now I'm going to change the subject a little bit. Arthur, you kind of made a detour on the way back to New York, and you stopped in Nashville. Um, can you tell us about that trip? I was very fortunate. Uh, you know, in my 25 years of business, I've made a lot of friends. Besides clients, I've made friends. You know, which which is very exciting about you know if you can enjoy what you're doing, you know um, it, it's it's a lot easier. So one of my clients slash friends had made the offer to invite me to the Nashville Predators Vancouver Canucks game, which was just really exciting. I mean, you want to talk? I, I thought Boston had the best fans, and I've been to Fenway Park and seen a baseball game, the Bruins games. You know, Philadelphia is that way. Nashville Predators inside the Bridgestone Arena. I've never heard it as loud as anything in my life. These guys were cheering on the Nashville Predators. They're calling it Smashville. They're calling it um, Hockeyville. It's amazing. But these guys, they're an eight-year-old team. They made the playoffs six years out of the eight. This was the first time they made it to the second round. And they put a big fight to Vancouver. They almost um, took them. It went, six, it went six games, but they ended up losing. But what an exciting time um, and what a great opportunity to go see a game in another area. Now, did you run into Kara Kara and her, and her husband? Yes, actually, you know, it's funny that you say that, you know, but making friends again and different people from all over the area. L.A. Limo out of um, Victoria um, and just near Vancouver, actually about two hours from Vancouver, uh, L.A. Limo, Kira and Ed both were invited as well, and they made a 12-hour trip. I mean, I was very fortunate. I, I went from D.C. to Nashville, which felt like a puddle jumper, an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes at, at the most. Uh, so for myself, it wasn't that bad. Kira and Ed took a trip from um, Victoria. They went to, um, let's see, I think their first trip was getting out of Victoria, heading to San Francisco, San Francisco to Chicago, Chicago to Nashville, only to arrive at the airport to find their luggage didn't show up. You know, we won't mention the um, the airline right now because the, the baggage did show up the next next morning, so it wasn't too bad. But I think they might have seen that, you know, that Canadian luggage tag on there, and they were coming into Nashville. I don't know if someone was playing a trick on them, but, you know, they made a 12-hour road trip. They were fortunate enough to be sitting in the, at the game and see their team win, which pushed that game back to Vancouver, only to see the Predators win again in Vancouver, making everyone come back again to Nashville. You know, it was, a, it was an exciting series. It was a tough series. How Hockey is a lot of fun this time of year. I mean, we're looking forward. You know, Boston is going to be playing um, Tampa Bay Lightning coming up, and then there's one final game. I think they're playing tonight, Dave, aren't they? It's San Jose yep, versus San Jose. Detroit. And yep. that one, that that was pretty wild because, uh, you know, uh, the Sharks were winning that series 3 nothing, only to, uh, I guess, allow, I guess you want to say, where Detroit really stepped up their game and, you know, came back and tied that series uh, to 3-3 right now. Yeah. Now, Arthur, prediction. What teams do you think will be in the Stanley Cup final? Oh man, I, I do think I think Vancouver is pretty strong. They, they're they're a great team. Uh, good hockey. Their goalie is probably the best in the NHL um, from any team. The guy is just amazing. 
Um, so I do think it's going to be Vancouver. And I guess, you know, the Lightning, I'm really pushing for Rolison. You know, I mean, former Islander goalie, you know, 40 years old, playing like a 25-year-old. The Islanders gave him an opportunity to leave, put him onto a team that was winning, which was Tampa Bay. Uh, Tampa, he's been doing great with that. They have a challenge to beat Boston. Um, whether they can do it, I'm not sure. That looks like it could be a seven-game series. I think that's going to be a really tough series. So I'm going to say Tampa against Vancouver. Um, winner, um, against my will, I'm going to probably say Vancouver. I say it's going to be Tampa versus Detroit. I think Detroit's going to win tonight. Uh, what do you wow. think, Doug? Who do you think the two teams are going to be left? <clears throat> I'm not a huge hockey fan. I, I do watch some at some point. I know that authors are really hockey, uh, you know, hockey crazy, but uh, I'm thinking the Tampa Detroit like you. Okay, great. Now, Doug, how can the listeners out there, if they'd like to get in touch with you about coming to your association or if they have questions about the Riot Act or the labor laws, how can they reach you? The easiest way to reach me is just shoot me an email. Uh, I'm Doug at executivelimousine.org. That's Doug at executivelimousine.org. They can also visit our website. We've done a bunch of things there. I'm just going to mention briefly. That's nslali.com, nslali.com. And you'll see we've done a bunch of things there. We have something called Job Trade, which I always try and share with associations. Uh, what it is is it's kind of a uh, if, uh, if a company is stuck with a job, I'm not saying that you're looking for somebody to do your work for you. Uh, not a regular affiliate relationship, but if you're stuck, you go on Job Trade, you post the job up there, it immediately shoots it out to you know just about all 70 members instantly over their next tells and their radios and uh, gives us the information. And maybe there's somebody out there who can help you in a pinch. There's a lot of different things that we've done at our association. Uh, I make these little funny videos on YouTube. You can search Doug's limo. Uh, that's B O U G S L I M O in one word, and you'll see a whole bunch of videos that I've made uh, over the past year and a half. Uh, just educating limousine operators about different things. If I could share information, things that I got stuck with, or problems that I had, and you could see it beforehand and save yourself a whole lot of grief, that's a terrific thing. So I think, you know, as an industry as a whole, uh, working together, sharing ideas and information definitely makes our businesses better. And Arthur, how can the listeners get in touch with you? They can always check us out on the internet at limocards.com, L-I-M-O-C-A-R-D-S.com. And also, once again, if you're looking for any information on the National Limousine Association, that's limo.org, L-I-M-O dot O-R-G. And you can find information about the association, or if you need information about Creator Card, limocards.com. Well, I'd like to make a plug for myself. Uh, I am David Bastian from Town Livery Vehicles in Buffalo, New York. Just to let everybody know out there, if you're looking for Lincoln Town Cars, we have about 30 of them that just hit. So we have cars available today if you need them. Doug, Arthur, thank you again, guys, for coming on the show. We, we greatly appreciate it, and I hope to have you back on again. Thank you, David. David, thanks for having us, and uh, we will chat soon. Bye-bye now. Okay. Th Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. And thank you again to listening to the Limo Show for the listeners out there, presented by Town Livery Vehicles on Blog Talk Radio. Now, we appreciate the time you've taken to listen to the program. Uh, the Limo Show will be coming to you just about each week here on Blog Talk Radio. So we welcome you to listen and tune in to the Limo Show have a great week. Good night.